Hello, people of the internet. My name is Leo, and welcome back to Dream Daddy. Now, if I'm doing my math correctly, and I believe I am, unless I don't deserve to be in college, uh, we should be able to finish off all of the dates for a single dad for each episode and have about seven episodes left. So, hey, I guess that's the plan. So... I've decided that I'm going to leave Hugo and Damien for last because, hey, might not end with what I believe is going to be the best. But might as well start with the worst, and the worst is going to be Knife Dad, who didn't even go on a date with us yet, just uh, kind of blew us off. So we're going to see if anything happens this time, and if nothing happens... Well, then I guess we're just gonna have six episodes left, and I'll do two dads this episode. But we'll see. I'm gonna message Mr. Robert, Robert Small. It's never too early to invest in a personal IRA. Uh, eat plenty of carbs the night before a big game. You're, I'm not the person to ask about health stuff, so... I have no idea whether to confirm or deny this, and the game is yet again not responding. Alright. I had a lot of fun with Robert... Oh, by the way, I'm not sick anymore. That's a plus. I had a lot of fun with Robert the last time we hung out, but I'm beginning to wonder if he's dodging me. I've tried mess messaging him a few times, and Dadbook says he hasn't even read them. I haven't even seen him come out of his house, actually. Alright. I decided to send him one last message, figuring that this will produce the same result. Hey man, don't know where you've been, but we should grab a drink soon. I walk away from my computer, because at this point, I know he's not mess messaging me back anytime soon. I linger in the kitchen. I'm all caught up on- I'm all caught up on work. The house is relatively clean. Maybe I should do something nice for Amanda. Ah! I'll bake her favorite pie. I root through the pantry and pull out all the ingredients. This is an old family recipe that I used to make with my grandmother when I was a kid. I lost the actual recipe card a long time ago, but I think I'll be able to remember how to bake it. I'm a professional chef. I'm gonna make the best... Are, are we making a cake or a pie? Uh, don't worry, I'm the best chef. We will do this. I start mixing the ingredients together for the crust until I get a nice dough. I throw some cherries into a saucepan to make the filling. Normally, I don't like to multitask in the kitchen, but this cherry pie is a piece of cake. Pie? It's a piece of pie. I'm making a pie. Alright. Good. I am making a pie. A cherry pie. I got this. Got this. Oh man, I can never remember what temperature you're supposed to set the oven at. Pretty sure it's 375 degrees, but I could be wrong. I'm gonna go out on a limb here. And say... 500 degrees Kelvin, exactly. Not sure how you'd measure that in an oven, but... Go ahead and set it at 500 degrees Kelvin. Who am I kidding? I'm never wrong when it comes to this pie. My special twist on my grandma's recipe includes a secret ingredient that not even Amanda knows about. It really makes the cherries extra flavorful. God, why can't I remember what the secret ingredient is? I was just about to ask, what is the secret ingredient? How does, how does one make cherries more flavorful? Uh, there's actually this thing that I use not sure if I can say the name of it, but uh, it basically just uh, accentuates all of the flavors, basically just makes everything more powerful in the dish. Okay, more cherries, salt, almond extract, more cherries would just be cherries, they wouldn't be extra good cherries, they'd just be cherries, salt, in a pie? I think I'm gonna have to go with almond extract. Oh, it's almond extract. Duh. Like, salt or more cherries would even work. Oops, I accidentally poured a little too much in. Way too much in. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> Baking is an art. Some of the most beautiful art is made from mistakes. Uh, my mistakes are not art. My art is just mistakes. Alright, I finally get the pie into the oven. How long am I supposed to leave it in there? 50 minutes? I'll just swing it. It's not like I'm going to set the house on fire or anything. Is it, have you ever known anyone who is baking, and then whenever they're baking just randomly catches on fire? It was scary. My aunt, she was making... What was it? Sweet yams or something? Sweet potatoes? I don't know, 
she was like putting a marshmallow dri drizzle over them, and they all caught on fire. <laughs> and it was it was pretty terrifying to say the least. Just just a pot full of fire spilling out. We I can't remember how we got rid of the fire, but don't worry, we didn't die. You're not listening to a ghost right now. I'm fine. All right, Amanda's going to be so excited. That kid loves a good pie. I have a seat at the kitchen table and do word jumbles until Amanda comes home and hear the door slam open. Yo, Pops, what smells like pie in here? It's pie, sweetie. Yeah. Amanda darts over to the oven and looks inside. Yeah. Yes! Hey, uh, it's not done. Be patient. Hmm. What's your angle here? What? Hmm? Pies are an objective-based confection. What are you trying to get out of me? Fine, you caught me. Nothing. I've been leading a double life. <laughs> you know, I hate to admit this, but I was, uh... So concerned about actually reading that stuff that I didn't, like, read it. <laughs> uh, so I'm just gonna pick the most interesting option. I've been leading a double life. Amanda, I have terrible news for you. I'm actually a pro skateboarder, an aspiring astronaut, and bank robber. The lifestyle is calling me back, and I must go. One last job. You know how it is. This pie was the only way I knew how to tell you. Well, I appreciated the years we spent together, but a trade-up is a trade-up. Remember me when you're kicking your feet up in Ibiza? Yeah. Thanks for all the pie. We share a, a cordial handshake. Uh. I wait a few more minutes before taking the pie out of the oven. I set it on a rack to cool and guard it so Amanda doesn't dig into it before it's ready. Uh, you know... Whenever people say, like, a food is too hot to eat right now, you need to wait a little bit. Like, I don't. I don't. I can eat that pie just as it is right now, and I will not burn myself, okay? It's not actually as hot as you think it is. Or maybe I just have lost all feeling in my mouth after eating so many hot things. You never know. Mm. Huh. What? Mm. Does it look kind of weird to you? No. Oh. That's just me taking artistic license on what cherry pie means to me emotionally. I'm just saying this because, you know, it seems like you might have baked this pie incorrectly. If it was salt, if it was salt, I am going to question your chef expertise, Amanda. And you're currently, right now, trying to pass it off as a good thing. Mm. It's art, sweetie. Was it art when you accidentally baked a whole uncracked egg into the center of my 12th birthday cake? Yes. Just don't eat the center. The, the center is supposed to be your heart. It represents your heart. And if you eat your heart, then you're just a freaking cannibal. And we can't have that in this household. It was art. Well, it's... Was it art when you tried to make brownies and accidentally created chlorine gas? Okay, Ram, I can't even defend you on this one. How did you do that? Chlorine gas? I mean, I, I don't know too much about, like, chemicals and stuff, but... I don't think brownie ingredients necessarily mean chlorine gas. I think we may have failed this pie. Well, that's a bit of an exaggeration. Was it art when you... Just eat the pie, panda. Eh? I cut us a few slices and we sit down to eat. The cherry filling oozes out of the sides and the buttery crust glistens. I watch as Amanda takes a bite. Uh. Ugh. What's wrong? Is it not good? Uh. Amanda winces and fans her mouth. <laughs> no, no, it's just... I just burned the heck out of the roof of my mouth. This pie is amazing. You look like you're crying. You look like you're crying. Your eyes are red. Are you lying to me? Sorry for doubting you. I breathe a sigh of relief and take a bite. She's right. The pie is pretty incredible, as it always is. <laughs> Just put a little bit of almond extract in there. It's okay if you put a little too much in. Almond extract is the best extract. No question. Just bake it until it looks good. You know, it, it doesn't really matter the exact contents. You can put poison in it. For all, for all I care, just it has to look good. As long as it looks good, then nobody will suspect you're trying to poison them, okay? Alright. I'm really proud of you for making a pie without burning the new house down. 
I got a few dad tricks up my dad sleeve. Only the one? Why not both dad sleeves? Maybe fathers aren't as bumbling and stupid as the media makes us out to be. Maybe we as a society should have a little more respect for fathers as a whole. You know, I mean, my dad wasn't a bumbling idiot. It's just there are stereotypes out there that there are some dads that are bumbling idiots. There's some parents that just shouldn't parent. We'll just see how it goes. Dad, your sleeve is on fire! What? I run to the sink and put myself out? Pride will be in my undoing? Wait, how did that even happen? How did I suddenly catch on fire? What? Excuse me. Of course Robert is supposed to be the dangerous one. I'm not even on a date with him. And I'm already in danger. Great. Huh. Amanda and I clean up the kitchen and play a little more uh, living room hoops before she retreats to her room to do homework. Go back to my word jumbles. Hey, this one spells cat. Adopt a cat. All right. The rest of the evening trickles by. We eat dinner. I help Amanda with one of her scholarship applications. We both start getting ready for bed. I decide to check Dad book one last time before I climb into bed. Still nothing from Robert. Huh. Hope he's okay. I turn off the lights and lie down. Hey, Ram. Hey, hey, Ram. Come hang out with me. Oh, what is that? It's just on the verge of falling asleep. Climb out of bed and try to identify the source of the digging. My computer screen illuminates the dark room. This is actually talking to us. <laughs> oh my god, he wants to hang out. Oh my god. Okay, okay, I walk over to it. Ready to turn it off, but I notice what's happening on screen. Well, that's not exactly subtle. Winky face. But, I mean... I did have fun with him the other night. Go, go to bed. Okay. I'll be right over. You're gonna kick me out this time? Maybe. Hurry up! Gosh darn it. I reluctantly throw on a jacket and head outside. When I get to Robert's place, the door is already unlocked. This place is a mess. I'm gonna guess he has a dog, because I see a toy bone and a, a little thing. Or maybe a cat. Maybe the word jumble was a hint that he has a cat. He does. He definitely has a kid, because I don't think he'd wear all these kinds of clothes that are just uh, hung around everywhere. All of the alcohol is self-explanatory. Boomerangs on the walls. Maybe he's secretly Australian? I don't know. I need to learn more about this knife dad. As much as I feel like hooking up with Robert again is maybe not the best idea. That's a problem for tomorrow, Ram. Today, Ram just wants to get... Hi. Hey. Hey. So, how are things? Robert stares at me. Oh. I know you're not here for small talk. I shrug. Uh, y yeah, you, you got me. Robert closes the gap between us and whispers a series of increasingly filthy things into my ear as he backs me into his room. Just straight to that? We're, we're not even gonna... really talk? I'm starting to think maybe this was a good idea after all. Uh, I'm starting to think that, that maybe this was a bad idea. He's not even buying us dinner. It's just like, hey, hey, come over. Is that it? Is that literally... Hey! Oh my god, it's the next... Ram! What the heck are you doing with your life? <sighs> is the third gate... Is the, the third gate? The third... What third gate? Is the third date gonna be exactly like this? I hope not. Hey! Robert nudges me awake. Mm. Oh. Hey! Are you kicking me out? Hey. I, kicking is a strong word. It's more like a gentle, friendly push. Gentle and friendly are not words I would ever use to describe Robert. I'm not sure how to take that sentence. I sit up and stretch. Oh god, I'm so sore. I haven't had hickeys like this since college, jeez. 
That's literally... Is that all we're doing here? I'm not doing this again if you're just gonna force me to leave. Yeah, yeah. You'll say that next time, too. Throw my clothes back on while Robert smokes a cigarette on his balcony. See you around, I guess. Yep. I walk back home, my bones creaking. I think uh, the problem has arrived to tomorrow, Ram. Duh. What's his problem? Was that literally it? Maybe if you were hotter. There were literally no options there. Just a forever C? Are you kidding me? Poker buddy, goofy paranoia, whiskey, blood, silence? Well, of course I did good in silence. We didn't say anything to each other. Knife Dad, okay. Eat a lot of broccoli. Yes. Well, it's been a long day, a bit too long, and uh, tomorrow Ram really hates yesterday, Ram. I'm just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and walk down the hall to my room. This isn't my room. I wonder if Amanda's still awake. That kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I can hear a faint sound, but I can't, can't, can't quite make out what it is. I get a little closer. Is she crying? Amanda, Panda, what's wrong? Why are you crying? Do I need to kill someone? I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda? The crying immediately stops. Not right now. Her voice sounds strained. She sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. <laughs> oh no. In the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed, knees hugged up against her body. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. Did something happen? Did something happen? No, nothing happened. Go away. Um. I think, uh. I think she'll just be upset if I do any more than ask one question. So I, th I think I'm gonna leave her alone. Alright, I'll leave you be. I'll only kill somebody tomorrow when you're feeling up to it, okay? I back out of the room and close the door gently behind me. She immediately starts crying again. Wow, I have no idea what has her so upset. She seemed totally normal. I feel awful just leaving her to cry, but I also get the feeling that if I tried to do anything else, it would have only made her more upset. Exactly, she'd just be really mad at me. I can't stop mentally cycling through all sorts of awful things she could be dealing with right now. More than anything, I just want her to be happy and safe. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. After a long night of very little sleep, <coughs> I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever's bothering her. Or maybe she hates my guts for even trying to help. <sighs> hmm. About ten minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. She does not look happy. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle into the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, uh, anything big going on at school today? <sighs> no. Okay. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster lever up and takes her still freezer brand waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Okay, then. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short-lived, but it always hurts. Ugh. Man, the man, the way you do this to me, why you do this to your father? Por qué? <laughs> Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. I don't know why I'm speaking like this. I'm just trying to be sad. <laughs> I 
there's a back at the kitchen table. Look at a picture of Amanda and I hanging on a wall. And as I'm teaching her to ride a bike, her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. <laughs> And man, why you do this to me? Every time she would fall off and scrape her knees, she would get up and try to get. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. And she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages. And why did she keep trying? <laughs> As I put the bike away, she stood in the middle of the street and screamed. And I took her for ice cream, which was like nothing even happened. Wait, that means... Ram, look in the freezer if there's ice cream. We might be able to fix this. We might be able to fix this. Just get the ice cream and whatever's left of that cherry pie. You can't have eaten it, eaten it all. There has to be some left. Just give her food. After giving it a bit of thought, I decide that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. Tengo una idea. I start rummaging around for ingredients. Yes! Food! The best medicine. I hear Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline to her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin? What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Yeah. I wanted to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know something's wrong, and I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So just, whatever it is, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but whatever it is, just know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Uh, honey, you know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language we both understand. I pull a cake out of the refrigerator place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting is set by now. Hopefully I didn't put a whole eggshell in there like before. Ta-da! Dad... Aww. Sorry you're sad, but I support you 100%. Aww. It, it, it's not the most professionally made cake, but aww. I still want to eat it. It took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting uh, somewhere around sad and had to start over and uh, this is beautiful. It's strawberry. Oh yes. Yes. The master chef strikes again. I know food. I eat it all the time. I know what food you need to feel good. I know the feel good food. Cake is feel good food. Amanda gives me a big ol' hug. Uh, I grab some plates and forks and serve us up some delicious cake. So, it's really stupid. What is? This whole thing, I know I've been really weird lately and there's just... I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. Go ahead and do that. You are an artiste. My darling Manda Panda. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? Hmm. I guess I should start from the top. So you know how Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California, right? Emma R? The one who puked in Dead Gotham Beyond. Haven't heard about that one. Okay, if it's Emma R, then it's most likely the best friend, because you'd be more upset about a best friend more upset like Amanda is about a best friend than the other one. Now, I told you guys to remind me of the difference between Emma R and Emma P. And I can't remember. And I hope this is the right yeah. one. You're suddenly happy. You got it! Wow, proud of you! <laughs> a anyways, ever since she got the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? She's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P. I just thought it was all in my head for a while. Then I found out from Rosie M that both of the Emmas, Grace and Noah, all went to a party at Mackenzie F's on the same night they all told me they were busy studying for the Calc AB final. Alright, so, uh, 
Emma R, Grace, and Emma P, and Noah. Um, Rosie M helped us. Mackenzie F is potential. So that's uh, four definitely murders and one potential murder. Gotcha. Uh, anyone have some pen and paper? I need to write down these names so I kill the right people. Wait, Grace doesn't have... Grace and Noah don't have last names, so I'm not sure which Grace and which Noah. Don't worry, I'll, I'll find out. I will stalk every Grace and Noah in the entire school until I find out which one is which. Nice! So, uh, another important piece of information is... Uh, God, this is embarrassing. I um, have a crush on Noah, and uh, that's the thing. What? Oh! I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Okay. You're a bad liar. So are you. I learned from the worst. Oh. Anyway, so the only person I told about the crush was Emma R. She promised not to tell anybody. I didn't confront them about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama. So I just kept quiet and kept going about my business. Amanda sighs. Then one day I invite everybody out to get nachos at the mall, and after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they all say they're busy, like, simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, they'll just eat nachos at home, right? Uh, but we were out of chips, and I really, really wanted nachos. Totally understandable. Ugh. So I go to the mall anyway, I get to the food court, and who do I see there but Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah, all hanging out together and eating nachos without me. Grace, Emma P, Emma R, Noah, you're all dead. You hear me? You're all dead. All use. You hurt my daughter. I'm coming after you. You're gonna die. I got the knife dead with me. The knife dead and the friend dead are gonna are gonna kill you. You're gonna die. What? <gasps> Gets better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them and I realize that Noah has his arm around MR, which is kinda weird, right? MR's the one you told about the crush. Emma R. Okay, I'm not going to murder Emma R. I'm going to torture her alive and let her bleed out. But then they kiss. No, as well. No. <laughs> yes, I know. So I storm over there and I'm like, hey. And Grace drops a nacho on her shirt because of course she does. And Emma R just like glares at me. Grace, Grace, nothing is coming up. I don't know who that is. I will find you, and I will kill you. Let's take it all over again. Grace is the boring one, gossipy one. <laughs> um, uh, boring, gossipy. I don't think we've ever heard of Grace. Uh, we know that she dropped a nacho, so. Here. <sighs> no, Dad, please stick with me. God dang it. God dang it. Huh. Grace is the one nobody really likes. Uh, I guess that's me now. But anyway, nobody will say anything, and I'm just like, you guys suck. So I realize it's not the most eloquent thing to say, but I was very angry and really embarrassed, and I just wanted to get out of there. So I left without nachos, might I add, which only further contributed to this crappy day, and immediately he drafted a super long text to the group chat, asking them why they've been so weird. I wrote another one to Emma R, asking how long the Noah thing has been going on, and sorry, I know that's a lot. You still following? What did Emma R say? I'm a little confused, but I think I understand. I have no idea what's happening. What did Emma R say? Oh, okay. Get a load of this. Emma R says, you know what? Let me just read it to you. Anna pulls out her phone and reads, word for word, in an arduously long string of text messages. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that? I cannot believe that. She is going to die. I care so much about a man's social life and mental well-being, but man, do I not understand what she's talking about. This is all beyond me, but I'm trying my hardest to be supportive. Uh. They were dating in secret for, like, months. So I told her that she's been 
being a really terrible friend. She's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, then just stop being my friend. And I was like, okay, and then she left me on read, and then... Wait, left me on read? What's that? J just shut up, Ram. Oh, like, she saw my message and didn't reply, and I know because there are read receipts. I don't know what read receipts are, but I'm just gonna nod and pretend I understand. Gotcha. So while this is all happening, I'm talking to Emma P about how mad I am because she's at least being kind of reasonable, and I'm venting to her about how mad I am at everybody and stuff. And then out of nowhere, Noah texts me and is like, how could you say that about me? And I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me that Emma P sent screenshots of everything I told her in the group chat that I got kicked out of. Boy. You're gonna die. Alright, I think you lost me in screenshots, but that definitely sounds bad. <sighs> There's so much more of it. Honestly, it's all just really stupid teenager stuff. Don't worry. It's about to become really stupid dead stuff. The bottom line is that everybody dropped me, half of my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. Well, she's going to a different college than you. Well, <laughs> actually, let me rephrase, rephrase that. Uh, you're actually going to college. She's not. She's gonna die. All of them are. Don't worry, Amanda Banda. I got this for you. Amanda, I'm so, oh, it's, Amanda, I'm so sorry. I almost expected it from everybody else, but <sighs> Emma R has been there since Dad died. I can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. Don't worry, Amanda Panda, I'm going to stab her in the back. And then just let her bleed out. While also probably cutting off her limbs. And then stopping the bleeding just enough so she doesn't die. And then letting her bleed out. Don't worry. I got you. Not even that mad that she's dating Noah. I'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs at the rem remnants of her cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everyone just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. As bad as I am at everybody, like, miss them, Dad. Amanda looks so dejected that I almost can't take it. What could I possibly say to uh. help? Anyways, that's it. That's the whole sordid tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know it's pretty dumb. It's not dumb. That That's... Uh, those are some really, really bad friends. Like... Just not even telling you what's going on, T kicking you out of a thing that you suggested that they do. It's just honestly, uh, obviously in real life, uh, I wouldn't go killing anybody. But if friends of my daughter did do this to my daughter, there'd be some serious talking to them and their parents. They would not get away with this. I'm, I'll make sure of it. Not not murder. Murder in real life is not cool. Uh, when it's fake murder in a fake world, that that's that's cool. Uh, well, it's not cool, but as long as you don't actually kill somebody who's a real person, then you're good. Got it? Don't kill anyone, unless it's a video game. It's not dumb. No, it's a stupid thing to be upset over. Man, that your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. Otherwise, you're not human. You're a game show host. I guess. Unless you've secretly been a robot who's been approximating human feelings this whole time. Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long, long time ago. Oh, if, if only we could all transform into monster drugs. Just become literal transformers. But seriously, I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. Not all friendships last forever. Real friends don't do that. High school sucks. Not all friendships last forever. Because that is the most true one, because you're going to have friends... And th this applies. You're going to have friends that you'll know for a few years. Like, high school friends. 
you're probably not going to stay with your high school friends um, all throughout your life. I mean, uh, when I was just a kid, uh, I was in one town for elementary school, and I had a lot of friends there. And then I had to move because my parents divorced, and I went to a new school, knew nobody, uh, never saw anybody else from my old school ever again, except for maybe one or two people on, like, four or five different occasions where we just randomly run into each other and, like, oh, hey, you're that guy I once knew. Hi. All right, bye. I'm, uh, I'm walking this way. And, like, uh... In high school, I had people who changed schools on me because they decided that our school sucked. Friendships don't always last forever. Uh, you just gotta make sure that you get a friend who you think that you can have a good friendship with. If you just have, like, one, two, three good friends. Like, friends that you can actually rely on, that you want to have them in your life then you have to take the step to keep them in your life when paths, like, change and you head for different ways. And there's all sorts of ways that you can stay in touch. You got Discord, you got Skype, you have snail mail, you have email, you have anything just to keep in touch with them. You just have to make, you have to make the decision that you want to keep them in your life if they're a friend that you think that you want to keep them in your life, and then you have to actually do it. Anyway, that's enough advice. Uh, not all friendships last forever. People are going to come in and out of your life. It's just how it works. Not every friendship is going to last forever, so cherish your friends while you have them. When it's over, don't dwell so much on the bad stuff. And yeah, when they are gone, uh, maybe say you, like, leave on bad terms. Like Amanda here. Uh, having all of those people be generally bad friends. That doesn't mean that she can't still be friends with them. Like, you could have, like, one major fight where you're like, Oh, I'm never talking to you again. And then end up being like, Oh, hey, uh, want to be friends again? That's happened to me a few times. I've gotten into major fights with people. And sometimes I don't talk with them for a year, and then we just end up uh, coming back together as friends. And we just uh, make fun of the fact that we ever got mad at each other to begin with. Sometimes it happens like that. And when bad stuff does happen, just try to remember why you had them as a friend in the first place. Like, what was it about them that made them stand out for you that you wanted to spend part of your life on them? Think about that stuff, not why you're not seeing them anymore, because if you just think about why you're not with them anymore, that's just going to make you sad. And I don't think anybody wants to be sad. I, I, I literally don't think anybody is, like, waking up in the morning, I want to be sad today. Just, I know it's hard not to think about it, but try. And maybe you'll be able to think about the good things and start to get over it. I don't know. Just have to try. You had some good times with MR, but you guys grew apart. Learn from it and keep going forward. There's so many new friends to make, and they're going to be so much cooler than Emma are and the rest. Ultimately, I think this says way more about their character than it does about yours. Yeah, if somebody is mean to you, that's more them just being jerks than you deserving something. Like, the only way you would deserve someone being mean to you is if you were mean to them. You know, so it's kind of like uh, the saying that everybody likes to make fun of. Uh, treat people how like you would want to be treated. It's basically the lesson. Just need to be a good person and people will generally be good persons back for you. Uh, unless you're playing Dead by Daylight and they're uh, really mad at you because they were lagging even though you were having uh, non-laggy communications and it was probably their end and not yours. Uh, anyway, because you're amazing. And if they can't see that, well, that's their problem. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. I look down at the table. Did we just eat that whole cake? Huh. Yes, we 
we did just eat that whole cake. Oh, good doc. Amanda gets up to go to her room. Before she closes her door, she turns around. Hey, Pops? Yeah? Ah. Thank you. You're always welcome. Love you, Amanda. I love you too, Dad. <laughs> My heart. <sighs> oh, one line that they definitely needed to be fully voice acted. They did it. They did it. Ah. <sighs> Uh, my heart. <sighs> Love you too, Amanda. Alright, minimize eating fried foods, candy, and sweets. Welcome! <laughs> You've got dads! Oh, yeah. That all happened in between uh, these two Robert dates. <coughs> Man, my throat hurts <coughs> from all that real talk. But anyway. Oh. Hey, you know what they say about their dates. They get pretty serious. Are you sure this is your dream, Daddy? Um... Each dad has an... And... Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna make sure I save. Right before I, uh, click I'm sure. Because if I can't go back to the others, then I have a save file for this. I'm sure. Always carry a pocket knife. Hey! Knife bed! Knife bed! Yay! Uh, liquor before beef, you're in the clear. What? I haven't heard from Robert in a while, except yesterday, but I guess that's a good thing, but can't help but kind of miss him. I'm about to go to sleep one night when I hear a knock on the door. Excusez-moi? Excusez-moi? I didn't even call him over. Hello? Hi. Hey. Look behind me to make sure Amanda's not around. What do you want? Hey. I think you know. Yeah, okay, I'm not doing this anymore. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, God. At my house? Um... With Amanda at home. It's different when it's at your house. I'm not doing this anymore, Robert. Robert, no. I don't have time to deal with whatever this is, alright? You clearly have zero respect for me or your, yourself. Go home. Mm. Fine. There are plenty of other dads in this neighborhood. Hey. See ya. Robert wanders off. Well, I guess that's that. <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I, I was good with the real duck. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. What are Robert Steeds? Jesus. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I draw the line at my house. I don't care that I got a D. The reason I'm starting with you is because you are the most disappointing dad I've met. Oh, knife dad. <laughs> the extended cut is the only cut worth watching. True, true. Don't d don't watch only part of the movie. Uh, watch all of it. Oh, I, think I have everything finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's her car in the driveway. Okay, gotta act natural. Be cool, Ran, be cool. Amanda walks through the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey, Dad. Off to a good start. I'm gonna get to the dad book thing, if it gives me a dad book thing. I don't know if it does. Still have the save. Still have the save. Something fishy? Rats! What? No, you asked too many questions. Sorry, sweetie, it's the feds. That life of crime is finally catching up to you. I tried to send them in a different send them in a different direction, but even I'm no match for the power and funding of the US government. Ugh. Well, if they think they're gonna take me alive, they got another thing coming. Kidding, you're right. I have a little surprise for you. Dad. Yeah, I can tell. You're very bad at lying. 
Anna, my dear, would you care to join me in the kitchen? <laughs> Father, it would fill my heart with glee. I, le I lead Amanda over to the kitchen table where a present lies covered under a tablecloth. It's nothing special, but I wanted to get you a little something. You graduated high school last week, and I know you told me not to make... Dig what? A big deal about it, but... Is that really it? Oh my god, I think this is like the ending of the game. <laughs> that was literally my last date. Alright, I guess I'm gonna be going back to a save file. Aw, uh, Dad, you... I dramatically whip the cloth off of the table. Amanda's jaw drops. No way! I figure you probably won't be able to get cable in the dorm, so I thought it might be a nice, uh, nice to take a piece of home with you. A DVD box set of long haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers? This is all 19 seasons! Oh, Ram, you are the best father. And bonus material, including commentary with actual ghosts featured on the show. <laughs> Dad, I love this! Thank you! She gives me a big hug. I'm glad you like it. Uh, hey, you want to hang out with me in the backyard for a bit? Toss the old pig skin or something? <laughs> totally. Follow Amanda to the back door. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, this is totally the ending of the game. Are we gonna have to go through this every single time I complete a third date? You told me not to make a big deal, but you seem to have forgotten that my entire mission in life is to make a big deal out of your accomplishments. So consider this your graduation party. Surprise! Dad, everyone's here! Well, yeah, everyone wanted to come and support you. Is that a mac and cheese bar? Sure is. Fully customizable, down to the type of mac. And there's an ice cream cake, the good kind with the crunchies in the middle. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just go have fun with your pals, all right? I'm so proud of you, Amanda. Amanda smiles and runs to her friends. I should make the rounds to make sure everyone's having a good time. But first, mac and cheese. Bram! Brian, you made it! <laughs> I don't pass up a good mac. Uh, what do you think of the party? It's not bad. Just not bad? Yeah, it's not bad. Don't let him bait you. Don't let him bait you. Thank you for the lovely compliment. Daisy trots up. Hi, Amanda's dad. Hey, Brian's daughter. See? See how that feels? This is a really great party. Thank you so much for inviting us. You're very welcome, tiny child who knows how to pay a compliment. Brian and I lock eyes. This isn't over. Hey, bro. Bro. Oh. This is a real rager taking our older age into consideration. Trying to be in bed at a reasonable hour tonight. Don't let me get too wild. Hey! Don't worry, dude. I'll keep an eye on your fruit punch intake. You know, I'm really glad we're bros again. Me too, dude. I really feel like this shouldn't be happening right now. Briar and Hazel peek out behind Craig. Hi, little ones. Hello. Hiya. Thank you for all that ice cream cake. Hmm. Wait, girls. How much of that did you eat? Briar ate four pieces. Ask any witness. No, I didn't. Hazel ate four pieces and wants to pin it on me because we look alike. I have your face. Nobody will ever believe you. Oh, boy. I'll let you guys figure this out. Good seeing you, Craig. Let's hang soon, yeah? Hey! Totally. Tell Amanda congrats for us. Looks like you've uh, settled into this neighborhood quite nicely. Yep. Couldn't ask for a better cul-de-sac. Oh. Well, I'm glad. Hopefully we'll see you at more church events. Got a big schedule planned for the rest of the year. Sure thing, Joseph. And maybe if you aren't doing anything later, we could uh, hang out sometime. Sure, Joseph. That'd be great. I mean, Chad. Sure, Chad in Kensington. That, that'd be great. Uh, well, see you later. Hugo comes up with a plate of mac and cheese. Ah. The perfect cheddar to mac ratio. 
Beautiful work, Ram. Thanks, Hugo. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda going into her dream school. I'm glad she turned it around for finals. Me too. That scholarship money will really help. Amanda walks by and pretends to not see Hugo. Amanda, come say hi to your old teacher. Uh. Hey. Congratulations on graduating. I know you're going to do great things at art school. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Amanda starts to back away. Uh, wait, I just realized that you're not my teacher anymore, so I don't have to be afraid of talking to you. <laughs> nice. You no longer hold power over me. Ah. You're right. Go forth, adult. I can no longer give you detention. Yeah, I'm going to break anything I want, and there's nothing you can do about it. Or are you still mad about that time I gave you detention for breaking, breaking my globe? Oh. No. Nope. Yes. <laughs> I'll have you know that the globe didn't even fit through the basketball hoop in the first place, so she'll fit into college just fine. Hey, Robert, glad you could make it. Bringing freaking alcohol to the graduation party. Thought after our last encounter, uh, maybe had enough. <laughs> yep. Robert takes a sip of his drink. Why is he being so cold to me? What do you think, Fram? You said no. Everything okay? I don't know. Sure. Why oh, won't you talk to me? I, I thought we had something. Whoa, whoa. Come on, Ram. You know what this was. I... Oh. You were an object to me the same way I thought I was an object to you. Figured we were on the same page here, at least from how you were acting. Should have said no to begin with. But I don't want to be in this if there are feelings involved. I got too much to deal with as it is. I'll catch you around. Oh. Hey, man. Matt. Let me know when Amanda leaves for college. I'll have a fresh batch of the talking banana breads ready for her. Thank you. I know she'll love that. Oh. What a splendid garden party. My deepest thanks for extending an invitation to my son and I. This icebox cake is divine. Yeah, thanks, dude. Good cake. Thanks for coming by. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat on our back porch step. The sun is setting and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Killer party, Pops. What can I say? I was inspired. So, uh... I, uh... I also have something for you. Oh, for me? Why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but... Growing up wasn't easy, and uh, but it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. Dad, you've been there for me through everything. There's... There's been times in my life where you were my only friend. Hmm. I was really scared of going to college and being so far away from you. But I realized that... Everything you've done for me has been to prepare me for this. And I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am today without you. Don't cry. Don't cry. I swear to God, Ram, cry again. You're the best, Dad. I love you. And I'm crying. <laughs> uh, anyway, that was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. <laughs> uh, present time. Amanda hands me a tiny wrapped package. I tear the wrapping off to find a framed picture of me and Amanda. It's us. Uh, kind of shocking all our photo albums are just pictures of me, huh? Figured we needed at least one together before I leave. And, uh, thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my life. You're such a talented, intelligent young woman. I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. Knock em dead, kid. <laughs> Always do. Man and I share a hug. This is only the beginning, Pops. Plenty more memories for us down the road. Memories to make and stuff to break, right? Ugh. Oh, I'm gonna break so much stuff. Intentionally and unintentionally. You're probably gonna have to pay for most of it. I got an achievement. World's best dad. I got the title for this video. World's best dad. Ugh. It would be my honor. Man and I wave bye to the partygoers as they leave. We sit together and watch the sun slowly dip below the horizon. I'm glad you made some friends. Yeah. Hmm. I know that's maybe not what you were looking for, but these people care about you. <laughs> I love you, Dad. We'll always have each other. You're right. It's gonna be hard at first. Uh, this is the next chapter in our story. 
I would be nervous about it, but I know that you're always going to be looking out for me the same way I'll always be looking out for you. Hmm. Team Kirk? Team Kirk. <sighs> and that's it. Oh. Uh, I, I was kind of hoping that, uh... Alright. Barry Kramer. Nathan Sharp. Yep. Craig. Uh, Jason Larzak. Uh, I don't... Joseph was Aaron. Oh. Uh, Quizmaster Quinn. Who's Quizmaster Quinn? Why didn't I get to hear Brian Weck's voice? God dang it. I wanted to hear Brian Wecht. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let this music play and I'm gonna let the credits roll. All of these people made a good game. I just have I'm not done with it yet. I wasn't prepared for it to end. I actually was kind of like, oh hey, uh, should probably go do those other dates, but no, it just ended like that. All right, Windling mini game, skip. Ball mini game? When? Where? Where? Oh wait, scheme is that gonna be Brian? Please tell me it's not gonna be with Brian and it's gonna be like Oh no. Oh This song. This song. Oh, okay. Ballad of a Fallen Dad? Daughter Brag Battle theme. Alright. Yeah, all of you did an amazing job with this. I'm still not done with it. Uh, I get some people play the game uh, and only go for one dad. Uh, but I'm going to be going for all of them to see all of the differences. Uh, and all of our dads. Is this the special thanks section? A game from Game Grumps. Alright. But anyway, yeah, don't worry. Uh, we will be returning. Don't worry. Uh, here's the loading screen. Alright. Click to continue. Uh, epilogue. Alright, that's where Robert Date 3 is. So if we go here... Welcome. You've got dads. I've still got dads. Uh, so that means, uh, next episode, we'll tackle another one of these guys. Um, uh, going from least favorite to favorite, so next is probably... Greg? Maybe? What, one of the remaining top three. Though I, I, I don't think Brian. I think the competitive dad... He's up there a little bit. He's up there. But anyway, that is going to be all for this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it, and if you did, then don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!